number 16. And for the next few minutes, just give me just a few minutes. I want to try to encourage these that are with us this morning from the Word of God. The Bible says in Numbers chapter number 16, look please down in verse number 42. Numbers chapter number 16, verse number 42. And it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation. Behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell on their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer and put fire therein, from off the altar and put on incense and go quickly unto the congregation and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. And Aaron took Moses, took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living. And the plague was stayed. I want you to draw your attention, please, back to verse number 48, where the Bible tells us, And he stood between the dead and the living. And the plague was stayed. I want to preach to you for just a few short moments this morning on this thought, standing between the living and the dead. Standing between the living and the dead. We say often about our first responders that we don't really truly appreciate what they do for us or their job until we need them and then we're glad that they're there. When we think about this passage of Scripture, there's a rebellion that has taken place in the children of Israel. And the Bible says that men have come up against Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, have come up against Moses and Aaron, and they've come up against the Lord. And the Bible says that God is going to pass judgment upon them. And the Lord says to Moses, get from this congregation because I'm going to consume them. The God who is rich in mercy allows Aaron, Moses, to direct Aaron to stand in the midst of the congregation to offer incense, atonement for their sin. And the Bible gives the statement that he stands between the living and the dead. That he stands between the living and the dead. I know many of you that are here this morning that serve our communities deal with this every day. You deal with this every moment. There's someone always that... You have to go to or run to. And as we saw just a moment ago, when everyone else is running, you're running towards the danger. There have been many who've paid the ultimate price and given their life for someone that they didn't even know or someone that they weren't even acquainted with because it was part of the responsibility. It was part of the duty to stand between the living and the dead. Many of you have stood beside the the vehicle or loaded a body or loaded a, a, a person into your uh, ambulance and ridden with them to the hospital trying to comfort them because of a, the seriousness of an injury and you stood between the living and the dead. As we look at this passage of Scripture, I just want to point out quickly three things that I want to remind you of that I believe should be very important not only in your life as a first responder, but in every person's life who will ever live. The Bible tells us here, if you look with me down in verse number 42, the Bible says, And it came to pass that when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron, they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation, behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. You'll find there in those, that verse, that short verse that we read, twice the word against is mentioned. And there's a world that we live in that is against anything that is right, pure, and holy. But it is not because they're against you. It's because they were first against God. 
We live in a culture today that has tried to turn every circumstance that we see in society into a political one. Can I say to you that the struggle, the truth of the matter is this, that the problems that we battle and the problems that we face and the problems that you deal with as public servants, while they deal with people, are more than that, they're a spiritual problem. The truth is this, is that the Bible says that the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and they're contrary one to another. The Bible says that there would come a day that men would call good evil and evil good and, and you don't have to take long to turn on your television and you'll find that today when men are standing against that which is right, that which is truth, that which is holy. And we live in a world today that's doing everything they can to suppress righteousness and yet someone must stand. Someone must stand. It's, it's easy to be critical when you're standing on the sidelines. It is much more challenging to be critical when you're involved in what is going on. As a police officer, as a firefighter, as a, as a state trooper, as an EMS or emergency personnel, you often can be criticized and people can have an opinion, but until you're in the midst of the battle, you don't truly understand what it is like. There's a world that is against the truth. But it is not because they're against you. It is because they're against God. The Bible says, and we'll read these verses in just a moment, but the powers that be are ordained of God. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. God placed you where you are, as he said in the book of Esther, for such a time as this. But as we look at the culture and we look at society, is the truth is... There are more that are, that are against what is right than are standing for what is right. So the easy thing would be to say, well, let's just stop standing. The easy thing would be, well, let's just, let's just do away with the truth. Let me, let me give you something, and I hope that you remember it. Truth has already been defined. Truth is not relative to what you go through or what you deal with. And truth is not relative to a media outlet or social media. Truth is not relative to what society wants to place as truth. Truth is defined by God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He said in his word that forever, O Lord, thy word is truth. When we begin to govern our life, when we begin to guide our life, and we begin to find out what, are the most, what is the most successful way to live life, understand this, you will never do it successfully apart from the truth. The truth is this, is while there are many who stand against the, the truth, and many who stand against righteousness, and many who stand against good, that there is a God that stands for it. That there is a God that supports it. Why do men do that? The Bible tells us in the book of 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, that in the last days perilous times shall come that men shall be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse. The truth in, in all of our life, there's a little bit of evil. The truth is that in all of our lives, there's potential for rebellion. The truth is that every one of us have a great need. The second thing that I want you to see is not only the truth, but the second thing that I want you to see is this. Look down with me, if you would please, in verse number 43. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell on their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer and put it in the fire. Put, it, put fire therein and from off the altar and put on incense and go quickly unto the congregation and make atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague has begun. The second thing that I want you to see is not only the truth, but I want you to see the trial. We live in a world that crime rates and statistics are something that they're not always positive to look at. We live in a world today where I could give you statistic after statistic after statistic this morning that would blow your mind at some of the decisions that not only adults are making, but that young people are making. 
the drug problem that's running rampant, not only in the world far away from us, but in the world around us. The alcohol problem that's affecting not only adults, but that are affecting teenagers. The outcome of all of those things are never good. No one ever calls the EMS, no one ever calls the fire department, and no one ever calls the police department or the sheriff's department. When things are going well, they call when there's an emergency. That emergency is a result of a decision that's been made that's not a good one. There's a trial, the Bible says, that the wrath of the Lord. When we think about difficult things, none of us ever want to deal with those things. You men and women who serve us every day, that get up every, every day and put the uniform on and go out, you don't wake up every morning and hope, man, I hope this is one of the worst days I've ever had. But can I tell you, there's coming a day far worse than anything you've ever experienced. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. People, I heard someone say one time that I know I'm going to heaven when I die because I'm living on, in hell here on earth. Friend, can I say something to you? Earth has nothing like hell has. There's nothing on this earth that can compare to eternity without Jesus Christ. And there will come a day when the wrath of God is poured out. When he says, depart from me, I never knew you. You say, Pastor Brian, that sounds like a very narrow message. That sounds like a very, you know, opinionated stance. Can I tell you? Remove all opinion that you want. It's the truth. Not because I said it. Not because even I believe it. It is the truth because it's given to us by God. Every soul, the Bible says, is subject to the higher power. The powers that be are ordained of God. He says the truth is this. While we live in a world that is dark and while we live in a world who seems to be getting worse and worse, there's going to come a day when we're going to answer for the decisions that we've made. I'm so thankful for the people who protect us. Somebody asked me, Pastor, why would we have a first responder Sunday? Is my mom in here this morning? Is she here? Mom, are you in here? Raise your hand if you are. There she is over there. I says, why would we have a first responder Sunday? You know, my dad passed away here a few years ago, and, and uh, you know, we, we try to be a blessing to my mom. And, you know, sometimes she has a heavy foot. And so we wanted to bring all the police officers here so you could meet her. So if you ever see her on the side of the road, pull her over, you could go and just uh, you know, make sure that, uh, just let her go, all right? Uh, I'm just kidding. That's not why we do it. She's going to kill me when she gets me, she gets me alone. But we think about the trials that we go through, and the truth is this, that there's going to come a day when every one of us are going to answer for the decisions that we've made. Whether you're a police officer, whether you're a Sunday school teacher, whether you're a pastor, whether you're the mayor, whether you serve often in public duty, whatever it may be, there's going to come a day when each one of us will answer for the decisions that we made. That's the truth. The third thing that I want you to see this morning is not only the truth and not only the trial, but the third thing that I want you to see is this. Look with me, if you would, please, in verse number 47. And Aaron took Moses and commanded, and Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made atonement for the people and stood between the living and the dead. You know, we often hear in the culture in which we live, well, there's separation of church and state. Let me, let me go ahead and tell you what that means. It's not that we have an entity over here called church. We have an entity over here called the state or government, and they're to be separated. That's not why we were given the separation of church and state. God never intended for God's people to stay out of the public eye. It was always God's design that we were in this world, we're not of this world. We're to be a light in a lost and dying world. We can't do that hiding our light in a corner. And I appreciate our community. I appreciate our mayor who's a Christian. I believe he knows the Lord and I appreciate his testimony. And I will say this to each one of you in public service. 
God always blesses right. It's not always easy, but God always blesses right. Dr. John Rice used to say, do right if the stars fall from heaven, do right. And when you stand for truth and you do right, for us, God will always bless it. It's when we get away from that and we begin to begin to slip away from that and we begin to move in a different direction that God removes His hand of blessing. But the Lord said here in the midst of all this, He said the plague had begun, that God was sending judgment. There was truth that God was going to send judgment. The trial was that the plague had begun. But here comes Aaron. The Bible says that he steps in the midst of the congregation and stands between the living and the dead. And the Bible tells us in the last part of the verse, verse number 48, look at it there. And the plague was stayed. Can I tell you the only solution, the only solution to every problem that we deal with, not only in our city, but in our families, in our children, in our communities, the solution to every problem we deal with is Jesus Christ. Because there was a day 2,000 years ago when the Lord Jesus stood between the living and the dead. You see, before, why, before Christ went to the cross, you and I had no hope. Before Jesus died for you and for me, there was no way. But when Jesus hung at Calvary, and the Bible says that He took upon Himself the sin of the world. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. He took upon Himself the sin of the world. And because He took upon Himself the sin of the world, He made atonement for you and for me. He took our place. And the Bible says because Jesus did that, if we'll simply put our faith and trust in Him. Many people say, well, Pastor, we've often heard about Jesus. And, and you know what? I'm a good person. I'm thankful for the people that serve us. I, I appreciate and pray for. As a matter of fact, on Wednesday evenings, someone in our local community's name is on our prayer list, and we pray for you specifically. We pray for your departments. We pray for uh, what, what you're dealing with and praying that God will give you wisdom. We pray for those things. I'm grateful for those people. I believe we have many good people that serve us. But can I tell you, friend, I can show you in the Bible where a good man went to hell and a bad man went to heaven. Because being good does not get you to heaven. Well, I'm a kind person. I'm a generous person. And those are all wonderful attributes. But there must come a day in every one of our lives, including this pastor. When I was 13 years old, I knelt at an altar at a youth camp and settled the matter of my eternity. I stopped trusting in everything else and started trusting in the only one who could save me. There's only one who stands between the living and the dead, and that is Jesus Christ. The Philippian jailer asked Paul, he said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? And Paul said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. What does it mean to believe on Jesus Christ? It means this, that there was a time in my life when I recognized I was without Christ. And because I was without Christ, because I did not know the Lord, because I had not put my faith and trust in Him, I was lost. But I understood that Jesus loved me. Can I tell you that the greatest day in your life is the day that you understand that God loves you? Amen. I understood that God loved me. And because God loved me, He sent His Son to die for me. He sent His Son to stand between the living and the dead. Can I tell you how, how, how tragic it would be? Please stay with me. How tragic it would be for you to spend your life serving people serving others, trying to be a blessing and helpful to so many people and providing peace and comfort in, in the midst of some of the most dangerous, discouraging times. Can I tell you how tragic it would be for you on this side of eternity to put yourself in a situation where you stand between the living and the dead, but yet step into eternity and not know Jesus Christ? Amen. What a tragedy. There was a time that I realized that I was lost and that God loved me. Because God loved me, He sent His Son to the cross. And what He did at the cross was die for me. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. He died for me. He took my place. Do you know what I deserved? Do you know what every person in this room deserves? We deserve hell. But Jesus took our hell. He took our sin. He took our pain. He took our torment. Why? Because He loved us. You say, Pastor Brian, that's a great story. So where does that leave me? The Bible tells us in Romans that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Somebody says, well, Pastor Brian, how does a person get saved? How does a person get saved? Do they have to say a certain thing? Do they have to recite a poem? Do they have to accomplish so many things? Do they have to arrive at a next level? No, you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What do you mean believe? Believe that, number one, you're lost. That without Christ, there is no hope. But if you'll place your faith and trust in Him, and then what I mean by that is this, that if you will stop depending upon everything else other than God to save you, then by His Word, God has promised to save you. Amen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. I thank God for every one of our public servants. I've taught my sons when they see police officers, when they see sheriff's deputies, when they see uh, military men, when they see firefighters, to stand up, look them in the eye and shake their hand and say thank you. Amen. By the way, I think that's the way it ought to be. I don't care what Nike says. Just thought I'd throw it in there. God help us. The problem we have with our young people is an authority problem. I love everyone. I thank God for you. I pray for you. But it would be absolutely tragic for you to spend your life serving people and not know the God that died for you. Not know the God that stood in your place when you could not stand. That stood in my place when I could not stand. That gave his life so that I might have life. Aaron, what are you doing? I'm standing between the living and the dead. Tomorrow, some of you are going to go out and you're going to stand between the living and the dead. But it would be tragic to do that on this earth and never know the God that died for you. The greatest decision you'll ever make is the decision to trust Jesus Christ as Savior. To understand that Jesus stood for you when you could not stand. I want us to bow our heads and close our eyes for just a moment this morning. Bow our heads and close our eyes. The piano is going to begin to play a verse of invitation.